Hello awesome people of YouTube, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2. This is gonna be our green player Light. He is gonna be representing Mexico. This is actually game number 7 of the series. I've only cast two of them so far. And he is uh, currently on Team Root Gaming, who he's only joined a little bit recently. Representing Mexico in this tournament. Some of his recent achievements, I've already said them in the past. Um, 2015 first Copa America Grand Finals. He's won first place in 2014 and 15. And uh, just to note as well, this dude is better known as Major. And his opponent is going to be Desro, who is currently teamless. He's representing Canada. And some of his more notable achievements, actually quite a while ago, this was Heart of Swarm Time. 2014, it was a LAN ETS 2014, second place. He won $800 plus gear. So, quite interesting there. Desro hasn't been very high on the scene in quite a while. So, at this point, it's almost two years. And he's performing in this tournament. Let's see how he plays out here. Looks like getting a full scout out inside the base. There's not that much to see. I mean, it's just the standard Terran opening right now. It does have the gas mining, which essentially means that there's just going to be an early Reaper coming out. Now, one thing to note, this map is very, very notorious for rushes. It's very, very quick. The, the distance between the two bases is very small, and there's a ridiculous amount of gold bases here as well. So it looks like an early Nexus coming out from Desro, not being afraid of any uh, Reaper harassment. Obviously he did see inside the base, Cybernetus Core going down also, putting it inside of his mineral line. This is basically to prevent Reapers from going around like this and just being annoying in the back. Makes him a lot easier to surround and catch out. So putting down a pylon inside of his mineral line as well, reason for this is very well could potentially be throwing up another building here or here just to block off more access or also could be using this pylon to potentially hide the Stargate a little bit further behind his base. Now it looks like Light has opted to go for a command center of his own so that's all pretty standard here. Going for a reactor on the barracks as well which again is pretty normal. Nothing out of the ordinary being played by either of these players just yet. Which I suppose is good, in a way, it is a little bit predictable, looks like a factory on the way, so could potentially see a 1-1-1 build from Light. And let's have a look at what Desro is doing. Doesn't appear like he's taken up just yet. What is this going to be? Is this going to be another building? It is not, he's actually bringing it back. So that's quite alright. I was expecting to see either a robotics facility or gateway. It does look like he opted for, to go for the robotics facility as you can see here. So there we go, going straight for that tech. And it looks like there's a command center going down for light as well. So light potentially going to try to take this gold expansion here. Very difficult to defend it. But at the same time, gold expansions of course are very very good for resources. Now, while this base is very difficult to defend, defend because it's right inside, uh, right in Desro's face when he's attacking, this is also a difficult base to defend, even though it's a lot harder to spot it because you actually have to scout this very specifically. At the same time, it's very far away from his base if he does go with that. So I think he's going to go for this close one here. That's most likely the case. That way he'll be able to defend it a lot easier than if he gets attacked over there because of course scouting is the most important thing so it looks like there is an adept actually warping in here gonna probably scout out one or two workers before getting cleaned up by these four marines oh he didn't actually manage to attack that one bringing up these supply depots so doing everything perfectly here decides to back on up taking one worker with it which i suppose is of course very useful i mean any sort of harassment that you've managed to pull off is beneficial to you And there we go, it looks like this Mothership Core trying to take care of this. I wonder, is it going to get anything done? There we go, actually overcharging that pylon just to take the the Reaper out. I wonder, if would he have really needed to when he has two Adepts here, right outside his base? Now it looks like there is a Warp Prism being completed here, so probably going to start doing a bit of a, a an Adept Harass. Obviously very, very popular. He is getting Resonating Glaives as well, so gonna be definitely building towards that harassment build trying to take out a bit of a bit of um a bit of economy for light and of course adepts are very very good at that at the moment there we go loading that up i'm just gonna confirm there is four adepts in here no sentries which are actually quite useful for blocking off the ramp 
And oh my god, there's actually a cyclone already on the map. So this is going to be quite good for for light. He's going to be prepared for this as soon as the cyclone gets in range. He's going to pretty much lock onto that onto that war prism and basically destroy it very very quickly. There we go. Forces the back off here. There is a siege tank already here, so that will be able to defend against adepts. Now adepts, four of them would easily take out the siege tank. Potentially only lose one of the adepts with that. But at the same time, the siege tank does attack fire and it'll force them to get very close. Now, there is the Dark Shrine being completed as well, if you noticed the production tab. Wonder what he's going to try to do with that, potentially just try to sneak in some units. Now, of course, Orbital Commands are going to basically very easily deny the, the harassment ability from DTs. So unless he sends them in one by one and forces scans a bunch of times, it's not really going to work out that well for him. Okay, looks like there's one DT inside of that. Scouting up on the ramp, which is all perfectly well done here. So two bases are now saturated for light. Now he still has this command center. He's had it completed for some time now. I think it's about four minutes since he, uh, or two minutes since he's built it. So probably going to start wanting to move, going to want to start moving it up north into the expansion. Now notice that Desro has his own third base coming out so once this is fully saturated it's going to be very very dangerous for light he's going to have this big big protoss power push going out at the same time he's not really going to be able to basically outperform it in terms of reinforcements and of course reason for that is because he didn't put down his own base yet he seems to be a little bit scared to move out because i mean he has this fairly large army his army supply is twice of that of, of desro so he'd definitely be able to do, you know, some critical damage if he manages to move out. And of course, Desro could just go, go in behind the back and, you know, do a bit of harassment here and there. So this is actually two Dark Templars and one Adept. Gotta be able to take that Cyclone out if it's not careful. And actually locks onto this, which is quite interesting. He loses both units there. Now this DT has taken out a few workers, and I wonder, is it actually visible here for light? It's actually, surprisingly enough, it's very visible because of the fact that it's so, so close there. So for now, it's just going to provide vision, but eventually light will probably spot that. Okay, so all of his units are kind of out pretty far now, just a few of these here. Would definitely be able to take it out very quickly, but at the same time, he's probably just using it for scouting information right now. Let's see what he actually does see. Not, not that much actually, funny enough. Okay, so there's one disruptor here. And there's not that much of an army. As I said, Light has actually decided to go out with a lot more attacking units than, than Desro. Desro, I think, had his economy up better. Which, of course, he's not ahead of because of the, the mules right now. But his economy was rolling and doing very much better than Light's. But his attacking units are lacking quite severely right now. Now, concussive shells are already complete. So as you can see right now, the Marauders are able to slow down pretty much anything they catch. A free medevac getting taken out there. And this is going to be pretty nice for Desro right now. In a good position now, taking out one medevac, which will prevent, of course, harassment. That one disruptor being out of position, but at the same time, taking out so many marines with that. And that... That DT did just take out five SCVs. Just wanted to point that out. I don't know where he is. He probably got taken out right after the, the harassment was happening. Purification over going out. Not hitting anything with this one. So two immortals and two disruptors on the field. Let's see how far he's going to get with this army right now. Now, one widow mine is sitting here. I don't know what the purpose of it specifically here is. Maybe he's in case he tries to sneak something in here. Or tries to flank. And there we go. Siege tanks have been put on the high ground. This is going to be a dangerous position for, for light. But at the same time, equally as dangerous for Desro. Moving on into that supply depot. And of course, the engage from the marines. They're all stimmed up, so they have lost the, the health already. The energy on the medevacs is not that huge. So not going to want to overstim for no reason. 
Now a few zealots coming out here as well, so probably just to soak up a bit of damage. Taking out the bunker, it looks like the siege tanks are quickly getting taken out, uh, or lifted off and moved away, just to basically not have them killed. And turtle, turtle Terran is starting here as well with the two liberators. This is quite standard, I mean every time you're falling behind you can bring out those liberators and they can hold out for quite some time, I mean they're not that easy to deal with, you need to force about five stalkers to attack it, I think two volleys does take care of it. And that can be quite annoying to deal with. Now this is a command center actually going down, so either a planetary fortress or an expansion. I would have imagined that it's an expansion just for the for the the high yield over here. Now Desro really really interested in continuing this push. Now as you can see, the nexus here has just been completed as well, so he will start to saturate that very shortly. And there we go, the engage going off here again. I do believe that Desro has a bit of a better armor here. But the fact that the siege tanks can be lifted off can, of course, play in in uh, Light's favor. But no, it doesn't look like the micro on the siege tanks is, is that great. Getting them pretty much taken out very, very quickly here with pretty much everything. So there you go. 12 SCVs have also been taken out here at this point. Not being able to fight off this force that well. Now, this is the, the problem at the moment. He's going to want to focus these liberators down. Probably going to lose a few units, but that's fine. He does have the, the superior army right now. Now, two Widow Mines going down here. There's a few Marines reinforcing as well. I think that this could potentially be it for Light. The push moving on in here. There's not actually that much reinforcements here from Desro. Definitely going to want to warp in a few more units. I just want to have a quick look. How many gateways does he have? He has four gateways. So, for four base products, it's actually quite little. Which is really strange. Okay, so this this one widow mine has been here for quite some time now. It hasn't been taken out in a long time. There's a second one right next to it. So gonna have to be very careful not to lose those. One gets taken out there as you can see. Oh, there's actually another one there, so look how well this is hidden. Now it probably looks a bit different from Desro's side. Okay, and there we go. The counter harassment went off here. I'm not sure how much it did. I don't think it actually took out that much. Total of 9 probes have been lost here by Desro, which is not a huge amount considering he's taken out 31 SCVs from Light. There we go, the army supplies are very close right now, so both players are in, still in a very good fighting chance to win this game. The army, the worker supply is also very close. Desro is a tiny bit ahead, but of course mules even that out quite a lot, as you can see. The mineral is very heavily favoring Light, simply because of those mules. There we go, this command center has now been completed. It's actually only about half health, so if if Desra decides to focus it down, he would be able to kill it quite quickly. And the fort expansion going down is never a good sign for Desra. He's going to want to be very, very careful with this. Looks like there was a bit of harassment going down here. There's four probes lost, and whoa, nice disruptions. Or purification overs, rather. Taking out a few more units there, and that is going to pretty much put the nail in the coffin for this little army here. They're going to have to back away, regroup, and basically reinforce themselves. Army supplies are very small again, so these, both these players not deciding to max out at all. Have a quick look at the units, or the buildings. Looks like eight, 8 barracks and 4 gateways. Sorry, that's actually 4 nexuses. There's 9 gateways in total. So a quite a normal number. Now the big engage going off here, the purification over missing pretty much everything, almost hit his own zealot even. I do think that he can take this on pretty much straight on. Oh, wow, that was very clutch right now. Now he did actually end up losing pretty much everything here anyways, but that purification over was so close to hitting so many of those units. So I have to say, well done for picking those up. Unfortunately, blink stalkers do kind of wreck medevacs. Simply because they can catch up to him very easy. Another purification over going down. I want to have a quick look how many kills these these dudes have. The disruptor one has zero. Second one has four. Five. And there we go. GG. So while counting that, so so many SCVs lost. And that is pretty much that. Desro pretty much all over him towards the end of that. So many good disruptions as well. And he is going to be taking it for Canada in this series.
Okay, and that's pretty much it for Mexico versus Canada. I hope you have enjoyed this series. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up, and I will really much appreciate that. I'll see you guys in the next series, which I'm not actually sure what it's going to be. Hopefully, I'll catch some of the more popular players as well. And uh, that's pretty much it. Good luck, take care, and I'll see you guys probably later or tomorrow.